In this video, we're going to create an F1 track map style. As you can see, the video on the screen is not an F1 video. This is due to copyright reasons. But the track map looks like the one seen on the latest Grand Prix. In this case, we are not talking about a complex design, but recreating the track map in After Effects can help us understand some key concepts, such as working with shape layers, aligning layers, parenting, in short, a small but very useful things for day-to-day -day work with After Effects. Let's begin. I start by creating the outline of the circuit with a shape layer. I'm working with a reference image, so I'm placing it reducing the opacity, locking the layer, and now I can start tracing the shape. At this moment, I prefer forgetting about angles, curves, just trace a polygonal shape. I'm hiding the fill color, changing the strokes color, And once I've traced the final shape, I'm going to modify the anchor points to get the curves we need. To modify an anchor point and get the handles, you can press Alt and click on the point. And with the handles visible, it's just a question of finding the right angle to get the shape we are looking for. With the outline done, I can hide the reference image, rename the layer, and I'm going to increase the thickness. Change the color to white, and rename the shape. Duplicate rename the new shape and in this case change the color to black and reduce the thickness now it's time to create the circles representing the drivers the first circle in red color I reduce the size, rename the layer to the driver's name, changing the layer's color, and as I want the circle following the circuit's path, I create a keyframe in circuit's layer, press copy shortcut, go to circles layer and press paste shortcut thanks to this operation now we have a path to be followed on the circles layer maybe you are thinking the circle has disappeared this happened because at the moment of copying the path the circle moved due to the difference in the anchor points here is the circle let's relocate it by modifying the position values And now, if you take a look at the layer, you can see some keyframes were created in mode Rove Across Time. And that's perfect, cause moving just the first or the last key, we can control the displacement speed, but we'll see that later. Now it's time to check the circle displacement, as it's not 100% aligned to the path. Before, I didn't adjust it properly. So, there's still an offset I have to fix. Back at the position parameters, I'm going to set the values to zero. And now, you can see the circle's displacement is happening inside the circuit. I'm tweaking the keyframe's position to reduce the speed of the movement.
And as usual, we see the driver's initial next to the circle. So I am putting a text with these initials next to my circle. I'm using the first font I found that I think it's similar to my references. I just want to mention that I'm adding a thin black stroke. In this text, we have to move it next to the circle. And use the P-Whip to parent both layers. Mm, I'm not sure what I've done, but all has disappeared. Ah, okay. The problem is I've used the wrong P-Whip. Instead of using the parenting P-Whip, I use the trackmat P-Whip. Let's fix it. Make invisible again the circle. And now I can parent in the proper way. Tweaking a little bit the position. And the first driver is ready. Now it's the moment to add the expression loop out, which allows us to transform the displacement into a continuous loop. We have to activate expressions in the position parameter and just write loop out. With this simple action, the loop is created. We can play to check everything is working. And the movement is going to loop as long as the layer length. At the same time, we are going to keep the possibility to adapt the speed just moving the first or the last keyframes. It's time to repeat the process to create two more drivers. Now I want to create a wind's direction indicator. I need a triangle. And to create a triangle, we use the star tool. To adjust the vertex number, we can press the up arrow key for increase the vertex number, or we can press the down arrow key to decrease the vertex number. We have to convert the shape to Bezier path. This way, we can modify the vertex. So, in first place, I remove the vertex I don't need. And now, I can move the top vertex to get the shape I'm looking for. Once I have the triangle, I reduce his size and configure a simple displacement from bottom to top. I'm also animating the opacity, because I want an animation in which the triangle moves and then disappears. And again, to loop the animation, we use the loop out expression. But now, look what happens when we try to loop two different parameters with no coincident keyframes. We get this weird uh, stroboscopic effect. So, to keep the animation as we want, it's necessary to have coincident keyframes at the beginning and at the end of the loop. Now, as you can see, we keep the animation as intended. Anyway, I'm looking for more space between repetitions. So we need to move the final keyframes. Okay. Once we are happy with the looped animation, we can rename the layer and use repeaters to create rows and columns of arrows. I'm using a second repeater to create an offset row.
and a third repeater to increase the rows number. I can move the arrows layer to overlap the circuit and I've made uh, something wrong because now the animation has changed. Ah, okay, when I move the arrows, I've created a new keyframe so the loop is wrong. To move the layer without creating non-desired keyframes, we can move the playhead to a keyframe position, select all of them, and now move the layer. This way all works fine. Next step is create a new solid layer. Well, I renamed the wind layer to keep up good practices. And now I can revisit our circuit layer to copy the keyframe we set before. If I go back to the solid layer and try to create a new mask, after creating the first point, I can press paste shortcut and the mask is magically done. To get the mask work as intended, we have to set it in mode add. I like to also increase the feeder parameter and give it a little bit of expansion. Now we modify the mat to the wind layer and the track map is ready. Everything looks fine at this point, but if we try to rotate the wind layer, you'll see the arrow's displacement is wrong. Even if the arrow's orientation looks good, the movement is still going from bottom to top. To solve this, we need to create a null, and use this null as an auxiliary rotation control. I'm changing the layer's color, moving the anchor point, parenting the layers, and finally everything is ok. We have the arrows pointing in the desired direction and his movement is aligned to this direction. Ok. We are set to go. Well, here we have a minor issue, because the keyframes are not at the start of the layer. Now everything is working fine. So that's all for now, thanks for watching the video, hope you find uh, something interesting, have a nice day.